Yo, what's good everyone? I'm Alex, and this is my review of the new Tamron 17 to 28 f2.8 ultra wide zoom. Sony users been waiting a long time for this lens. Rumors started back when the 28 to 75 from Tamron was announced last year, and that lens turned out to be a beast. So if this one comes anywhere close, then we might have ourselves a new ultra wide king. Now that it's here, does it live up to the hype? We'll find out. So I really like the way the Tamron looks and feels. It's not metal, but the plastic construction has a smooth matte black finish. It's almost like a soft touch texture. The zoom and focusing rings are made out of rubber and they're nicely dampened as well. Tamron claims this lens is moisture resistant and you can see a weather sealing gasket around the metal mount in the rear. I've used the 17 and 28 in all kinds of weather, shooting a ton of landscapes, waterfalls, street, and urban photography. It has held up fine and there's really no complaints. I really like how light and small it is, so it's easily an all day carry. The Tamron measures 3.9 inches long and weighs under a pound, so it's a relatively compact and lightweight lens for a wide angle zoom. In comparison, the Sony Zeiss 1635 is roughly the same size, but it's only f4. The 1635G Master is even bigger, at 4.8 inches long and 1.5 pounds. So you can see how the difference in build is pretty significant when you're comparing these lenses. The front of this lens has a 67mm filter thread, which is the same as the Tamron 28-75, so the two of these can share filters. The barrel doesn't extend while zooming, so it keeps the weight fairly centered, which is great for gimbal use. There are no other buttons or switches on the body. I try to provide unbiased reviews, but remember that the sample images you'll see are a direct reflection of this copy of this lens, and your experiences may differ based on sample variation. So with that in mind, let's get to it. Let's start off with the sharpness test. This is a center crop from a shot taken at 17 millimeters. You can see the sharpness is pretty consistent from f2.8 to f16. But the corners are not as good. It's a bit soft at 2.8, but for a shot taken wide open, it's very usable. It does get sharper as you stop down to f8. Here's a center crop from a shot taken at 28 millimeters. Just like the wide end, it's pretty sharp across f-stops, even wide open. The corners are also decent, and they do get sharper as you stop down. Overall, I'm very happy with the sharpness of this lens. I have a relatively balanced copy, which means there's no significant softness at either ends of the zoom range. In real world use, everything comes out nice and crispy, and the amount of detail that this lens is able to resolve is insane. But of course, the Tamron isn't perfect. There is some noticeable distortion in the raws. At the wide end, you can see barrel distortion, and there is pin cushion distortion at the long end. This should be corrected in camera if you shoot JPEG, or you can correct it in Lightroom when they add the lens profile for the raws. There is also some vignetting in the corners, but like the distortion, it should be easily corrected. The 9-bladed circular diaphragm produces just average bokeh. It can look pretty creamy when the object is up close, but can be distracting in other shots like this one. On a positive note, the Tamron has really high flare resistance, and I couldn't produce any flare from my testing. Sunstars were visible around f8, but become much more defined at f22. The stars are not symmetrical however, but like bokeh, it's pretty subjective. Now let's talk about autofocus. I shot a ton of photos, with strong backlight, dim and dark environments, and the different modes like continuous and eye autofocus locked on fine, and worked just as well as my native glass. Here's an autofocus test in video mode shot with the 17 and 28. You can see how smoothly it transitions, and the autofocus motor is silent, so it won't get picked up by the mic. So the Tamron 17 and 28 punches well above its weight, especially considering it comes in at just 899 USD. But busy bokeh, average sun stars, and the fact that it doesn't go as wide as 16 and as long as 35 may just be a deal breaker for many people. But I really appreciate Tamron's design philosophy when it comes to their recent Sony releases. They crafted this lens thoughtfully, delivering a compact package with sharp optics, all at a reasonable price. 
so for me, it's definitely a keeper. Let me know your thoughts below. Are you gonna pick one up? Thanks for watching and subscribe for more. Peace.